Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to schedule tasks in the future using Celery. So there are two approaches that I'm going to demonstrate here. One is setting a time when you first send the task. So basically you tell Celery to wait a certain amount of time before running the task. And then the second approach is to set up a schedule. So Celery will follow that schedule and run your task on that schedule. And I know Celery can be difficult to work with. So if you need any further help beyond this video, I do have something called a coaching program. So I will work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you solve any problems that you have with Celery, Flask, Python, or just anything programming related. So if you're interested, just go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching, or you can go to the link in the description below. So the code that I have in this video comes from the last Celery video that I made. So if you haven't seen that video, you can also go to the description and watch that video first. But I'll briefly go over what I have here. Uh, just so you know what's going on. So I have this make celery function. This basically sets everything up. It brings in the config from celery config on my app. And then I have this tasks.py file, which has a single task, which adds a user. So I'll fill out a form and then it will add a user through the celery task instead of in the route itself. So here in views, uh, we see it will call add user.delay, which will send that over to celery to run. So just to demonstrate, I'll go to slash create user in my browser. And then for the name of the user, I'll call that future. And then in my database, I'll query and we see future has been added as a row in the table. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate the first method that I mentioned where I can tell Celery to wait a certain amount of time before running the task. So here delay is actually a convenience function for something called apply underscore async. So you can go ahead and just change delay to apply underscore async. And then you need to pass the arguments just like you have here. So I have form data and I'll make it explicit. So I'll pass a tuple. So tuple of form data since it only has one item I need the comma. And then there are two ways to do this. So the first way is something called a countdown. So Celery will wait a certain number of seconds before running the task. So it will receive the task, and if it has a countdown on it, it will wait those number of seconds. So let's say the countdown is 10. It will wait 10 seconds before running it. So let me save this and give it a shot. So let me go back to the Docker Compose one, and then I'll try creating a user. So we'll call this 10 seconds, add user. It started, and we see it received here, but I don't see the loop of numbers displaying. And if I just wait a few more seconds, it should start because it's waiting 10 seconds. And there we see it goes. So it waited 10 seconds before starting the task, and now it's running the task. And if I wanted to cancel it, I could, but no reason to. And we see that it's done. So that's one approach to doing it. A second approach is to use ETA. So instead of a number of seconds, you can put an exact time. So what I can do is I can say from date time, import uh, date time and time delta. And then for ETA here, I can say uh, date time dot now plus some time delta. So let's say time delta minutes one, and this will be better as UTC now because by default is UTC time, but you can change the salary configuration to be any time zone, but I think UTC is probably the best bet. So if I save this and do it again, we'll call this one minute, add user. Once again, it received it, but it's not running it yet. And I'll just wait for the task to start. And we see it's starting now through the magic of video editing. You didn't have to wait a whole minute, but it waited a minute before starting the task. So this is one approach to having things run in the future. The other approach is to set up some kind of schedule. So to do that, there are a couple of things to do. So first I'll go to Docker Compose. And here, when I start Celery, after Worker, I can do dash B. And that will set up something called Celery Beat. So Celery Beat will basically tell Celery to run things on a particular schedule. Now you can do this in its own process and it's good if you have multiple workers, but in this case, since I only have one, I can set up Celery Beat on the same process as my worker. And Celery Beat will follow a schedule for certain tasks and it will run those tasks according to the schedule. So let me give you an example. First, let me go into tasks.py and I'll create another task. So just using the same approach, share task, and we'll call this 20 seconds. So I want to run this every 20 seconds. And I'm just going to print running every uh, 20 seconds, okay? So a pretty simple task, doesn't really do anything important, but uh, this is what I want to display. 
So let me restart Celery, and now I'm, I'll just restart everything because I'm using Docker Compose. And what I want to see is I want to see that new task in my list of tasks. So we see here uh, project.tasks.20seconds. So that's my new task, and I want to run this on a schedule every 20 seconds. So to do that, I can go over to my configuration, and this is a configuration you could put anywhere. I just have it in my Dunder init, but because the Celery configuration can be a little more complicated, you can set this up so it's more uh, convenient to work with. But for this purpose, I'm just going to put it inside of this dictionary here. So for this dictionary, I'm going to add another key, and this key is going to be called beat underscore schedule. And then the value for the dictionary is another dictionary, and it's going to be just a bunch of tasks in this dictionary. So each key in this dictionary is going to be a task. So we'll call this every 20 seconds. So this will be the name of the task, and then the value of that will be another dictionary. And then the key here called task just takes in the task. So make sure it's the same as what you have here. So the exact same thing, I'm just gonna copy project.tasks.20seconds. And then the schedule. So for my schedule, I'll do it every 20 seconds. And then you can have some arguments here optionally, like a tuple, so one, two. But because I don't have any arguments to that task, it just prints running every 20 seconds. I don't need to pass them there. But if I did have arguments, that's where they would go. So I'll just save this. And let me restart everything because I changed something in Celery. And I'll run Docker Compose up. So for this, I don't have to trigger anything because I set up a schedule. So it should run every 20 seconds. So here we see info beat starting. So Celery beat is starting in my process. And then after about 20 seconds, it should run the task for the first time. So just waiting for that to happen. Uh, we see over here, it created the Celery beat schedule file which is good. And then we see here running every 20 seconds. So it was able to run that task every 20 seconds. So if you have a task that you wanna run on a schedule, you would set it up like this. Whereas if you wanted to run the task after a certain amount of time when something triggered the task, then you would take the approach here with the ETA or the countdown. And if you don't wanna schedule this every however many seconds, which really doesn't make sense for a task like this, what you can do is you can import from Celery. So you can say from celery.schedule, import, and then cron tab, I believe. So let me just save that and make sure it imports correctly. Actually, I think it's schedules, plural. So let's refresh. Yeah, okay, so celery.schedules, import cron tab. And instead of the schedule here, I can do cron tab and then something like hour two, minute 25 and day of week two, right? So what this will do is it will run the schedule the second day of the week, which should be Monday or Tuesday, depending on if it starts at zero. I'm not quite sure. I, I believe it starts at zero. So this should be Tuesday. It will run every Tuesday at 2.25 a.m. So you can set up schedules like this. You can pass in more arguments to CronTab if you want, but this is the general idea. So you have the option of passing the number of seconds, or you can create a schedule like this. Just know if you're creating a schedule like this, then your configuration needs to be set up in such a way that um, it's, it's easy for you to modify. Because if it's just a dictionary with no uh, functions in here like this, then it's easy to put like in a .env file. But if you have a function, then you just have to be careful to set up your configuration properly. So that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to show you, just two different ways you can schedule tasks in the future. If you have any questions about anything I've done in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.